Hello, welcome back to physics. We're going to be learning something really important in this lesson. We're going to learn how to add two vectors graphically together. So in the last section, we introduced what was a scalar, just a number. What is a vector? A, a number with a direction. That's what a vector quantity. And we said that we represent vectors as arrows. The length of the arrows, how intense or how strong or the magnitude of the vector. And of course, the direction the arrow is pointing is which way the thing is acting. But in physics, we're going to be doing problems all the time where we have to add vectors together. Maybe I'm pushing on a box with a force, which we now know is a vector, and then I have another force acting at an angle, which is separately acting from like a separate person, so he's pushing down. So we have two forces acting on the box. So clearly, if we want to figure out how the box moves, we have to add the forces together somehow, or, or at least it's helpful to be able to add the forces. But the problem is vectors are not just numbers. They're numbers along with direction. So to add them together is not the simple matter of just adding the numbers because how do you, you have to take into account the direction uh, that the things are acting on. And so we have a graphical method, actually drawing pictures to add vectors together graphically. The first thing I wanna say is we write vector addition as the following. We write it as following. Just a couple of quick examples. I've already kind of shown you here. If I'm dealing with force forces, we say the resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2, right? If we're dealing with velocities, we might say that the resultant velocity, because velocities are vectors also, right? V1 plus V2. We've got to keep our bars. I'm going to forget at some point uh, to do that. And then just as another uh, example, I've kind of thrown around electric field. The resultant electric field might be the sum of two different electric fields, E1 plus E2, but they're both vectors, so they add together, right? But in all of these cases, whether it's force, velocity, electric field, or any of the other vectors I told you about, magnetic field, uh, it can go on and on and on with other vectors. Velocity vector, I guess we already talked about velocity, acceleration vectors, uh, and there's many, many other ones, right? Most quantities in nature actually are vector quantities. They are different in terms of the variables we label them and all this, and they represent different things, but the vector addition itself is exactly the same because once we know they're vectors, they're all treated the same way in terms of how to add them. Let's go ahead and leave this on the board like this. So how to add a general recipe for adding vectors graphically. Okay, step one, you draw the two different vectors, F1 and F2. Gotta put my little vector arrows if I remember. F1 and F2. And you draw them in a certain way. You align them up tail to head. I'm gonna show you what that means, don't worry about it. All I'm gonna do is arrange the arrows, tail of one arrow to the head of the other arrow. Okay, and then step two is I literally play connect the dots. It's like kindergarten, you get to draw things and all that stuff, you connect tail of F1 to head of F2. So literally, it's like going back to second grade when you get to draw pictures for your math homework. Let's draw a couple of quick pictures of how we would add a displacement vector. Let's draw just, we don't have to do this, but let's draw a coordinate system just because sometimes it's helpful. So this is, um, this is now X and this is now why? So let's say we're walking from my front porch, which is, this is my front porch, right? This is zero comma zero. This is the, the central part of the thing here. And let's say that I move one, two, three units to the right along X. So it's kind of hard for me to draw it. So I'm going to kind of draw the arrow a little bit under the axis, even though it's really should be right on top of the axis. So you can kind of see them. So I'm going to call this D1 vector quantity. I've moved along x in the positive direction three units, three meters, let's say. Okay, And then, just to kind of help us along here, let me continue the tick marks. We'll continue the tick marks a little bit more in both directions. So this is one, two, three, four. This is five tick marks, and this is like three tick marks or something. All right. So then let's say that, actually, let me go one more. I'm going to go to six right here. Let's say that after that, I'm going to choose a different color. After I walk three units this way, I turn a little bit and I walk at an angle. So then I'm going to go up to, um, let's see here, 
up, uh, what I'm trying to draw is something like this, up here. Eh, not exactly perfect. Pretty close to what I want. I want to get over here to about six, and I want to get over here to about three. All right, so in other words, this is called D2. This is D2 vector. So my question is, if I walk out of my mailbox along X for three units, and then I cock myself at an angle and I go this far at an angle, this is, this is some angle I haven't given it to you, but it's some angle to the X axis, what would my resultant vector be? The resultant vector is going to be kind of the sum of those distances, but obviously those distances are not lined up, so it's a vector sum. I have to take into account the angles involved and the distances traveled, so that I want to know the resultant from my front porch, how how far would it take if I were to walk in a straight line to the final destination? Because here I went out of my way. I went this way and then I went this way, but the resultant would be from A to B start to finish as if I, were had, if I would have taken a second trip going in a straight line. How do I add those things vectorially? So you do the same thing as we did before. To add them vectorially, you put them tail to head. Now they're already actually arranged tail to head because it's two trips like this. So what you say is you say, well, D1 is represented by this. And D2, see if I can draw it right, is represented like this. So what is the, um, the resultant of this? Well, I start, they're already arranged head to tail, so then I just start at the beginning of T1 up to T2. Forgive me, I'm trying to connect it over here. And this is uh, what we call the resultant vector. All right? So I walk along D1, walk along D2. That's one trip. I, f I arrive at my destination. And then my question is, what is the total displacement, the resultant displacement, start to finish. So I add them vectorially, and that's represented by dr. So before we were talking about forces, adding forces, you can add displacements, and the resultant you get is going to represent the entire trip. Now, when we're talking about walking to my mailbox, let's say my mailbox is over here, okay, the, um, the resultant vector does not depend on path taken. In other words, let's pretend this is my front door, and then at the tip of this, the destination, is the mailbox. That's where I'm trying to go. Now in this path, I chose to walk a little bit down the street, and then turn and cross the street and go up toward my mailbox. That's one path. And my resultant path, my resultant displacement is represented by the blue arrow. Okay? But there are many, many ways to get to the mailbox all will get me to the mailbox. They will all have the final displacement vector, but there are many ways to do it. I could walk a short distance and then cut over sooner. I can walk a much further distance and then cut over much later. I will still get to the mailbox by different paths, but have the same resultant displacement. So let me give you a couple of examples of that. I kind of gave the punchline away a little bit, but let's just say we have, again, the same exact thing. Nothing is different. Um, but let's go ahead and draw, let me go ahead and draw one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay. So let's draw our resultant first. The mailbox is basically here. The mailbox is, I really want to get to that mailbox. The shortest path we know is this resultant path, just to cut across the grass, cut across the neighbors, cut across the street, get all the way to the mailbox. And of course, we took a, a different path to get there the last time. But there are other paths we could take. Instead of cutting over here at x is equal to 3, I can cut over here at x is equal to, let's say, uh, 4. And then I, and I call that d1. And then I cut up and I get to the mailbox here. I call this d2. Do you see how d1 and d2 here, they're two different vectors. This one is different because it's longer. And this one is different because it's uh, it's starting from a different point, so it's a different distance and a different direction. But the sum of these two vectors actually gives me exactly the same thing as this thing. Okay, One more quick example to show you what I'm talking about. x, y. Let's do the same thing. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the mailbox is my destination. The mailbox is basically over here. So let's draw the resultant first. There are many, many ways to get there. So instead of cutting across here, let's go all the way directly across from the mailbox. We'll call that D1. I'll look both ways across the street and I say, okay, I'm going to cross now. I go up, straight up, D2. 
So this D2 is slightly different than this one. It's pointed differently. It's also this one's longer than this one if you get a measurement ruler out. D1 and D, D1 in these cases these are obviously different. But the same resultant is, the tr is true. So the moral of this story is that for displacement vectors, or in general vectors, when you have a resultant, there are many, many ways to add to get that resultant. Two vectors can be added differently. The same is true of forces. If I know that I'm pushing a force here on a box with six newtons, and I know that I'm going to get that force by adding two vectors together, there's an infinite number of two ways I can do that. I can have the two vectors lined up, exactly lined up, with half of the force. They'll add up exactly. Or I can cock them at a little bit of an angle and adjust the magnitude so they give me that same force. Or I can cock them at even more of an angle and adjust their magnitudes even bigger to, to give me that same force. Just like I can pick lots of different paths to get to the end. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.